Hello everyone and welcome back to Shakir Adair's Fashion History. Now today I have a fun video for you guys because I'm actually I'm actually kind of excited to uh, teach you guys about this. If you guys don't already know, I will be teaching today about Marshall Field and Company, the department store. I've heard people call this the Bergdorf Goodman of Chicago. Um, I kind of agree with that. Now, as a Chicagoan, as a black Chicagoan who lives in the black metropolis area of Chicago, I am very proud and very honored to even be discussing this, to even know what this is. Um, so I will be teaching about Marshall Fields. Um, so this guy right here, Marshall Fields, um, was an, um, I'm, yeah, he was a businessman. What, what else can I really say? He was a businessman. He was about his business. He was about his money. Um, so he founded um, and also moved to Chicago. Well, he founded Marshall Field in um, 1852 and moved to Chicago in 1856. His um, friend, um, Potter Palmer, and I believe he has relations to the Palmer House on Chicago, um, I believe so. Potter Palmer convinced Fields and his businessman Levi uh, later letter Levi later Levi letter to lease um a six story building, um just built at the building was um leased and for uh with Palmer and a uh, letter. Um, well, I mean uh with Fields and letter. I apologize for that. Um, also, if I give out any false information or misinformation in this video, please comment and uh, fact check me and correct me. Um, but then came the Great Chicago Fire in October of 18, in early October of 1871. If you don't know about the Great Chicago Fire, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, this is the Great Chicago Fire or a depiction of how it happened. Um, yeah, so as you all know, it burned damn near down the whole city. Um, leaving, um, a few things up. If you guys have ever been downtown in Chicago and you see the water tower, not the mall, but the actual water tower the on opposite sides of the street, that survived the Great Chicago Fire. Um, so yeah, and the Great Chicago Fire destroyed the Marshall Fields and Company building, the first one. Um, yeah, burned it to the ground, uh, but a lot of merchandise was saved. A lot of merchandise was saved. And two years after the fire, Field and Letter, I, I would kind of want to say his name, his name is Later, but I'm just saying Letter. Field and Letter returned to State Street in Madison, opening a five-story building. This store expanded, and in also in uh, 1876, um, it, it, it burned down again. Like, uh, another fire happened. Um, how very unfortunate, but um, but yeah. The building was rebuilt. Um, even larger. And, and in January of, and in January of 1881, Fields bought out Levi, renaming the business Marshall Field and Company. In 1892, the structure between the building on State Street and Wabash was demolished and architect Daniel H. Burnham was commissioned to rec was to create a new building with the hopes of visitors of the World Columbian Exposition in 1893. And if you guys don't know what the World Columbian Exposition is or the White City, it's kind of hard to explain. It was a lot going on, but you know, it flocked visitors from all over the world to Chicago to see a lot of things. If you did, if you know, the Ferris wheel was also invented in Chicago, and it um. It's first. It was first put on display in Chicago at the uh, Columbian Exposition, and I don't think this is the first one. I think they had another one in nineteen in the nineteen thirties, but you know that one really wasn't that important to really even talk about. August of eighteen ninety three, at the end of the exposition, the store built two extra floors and installing the legendary State Street clock. If this this uh, State Street clock right here. If you ever if you ever walk past the Marshall Fields building, it is literally legendary to even just look at.
Marshall Fields died on January 16th, 1906 in New York City. Field was called the greatest merchant in the USA. John H. Shedd became the new head of Marshall Fields. And if you guys do not know who John H. Shedd is, just take a look at his last name, Shedd. Yes, his name is upon the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. I think that's right off Lakeshore Drive. And under his leadership in 1907, a Tiffany & Co., um, or Louis Comfort Tiffany, Louis Comfort Tiffany, I apologize because they're not French, so it's, you know, the S is actually kind of there. Um, a stained glass ceiling was like this, like, it's even, it's so beautiful to even look at. I can't even explain to you guys. Um, the piece contain the, the uh, ceiling contains 1.6 million pieces. Every time I go into Marshall, for, every time I go into Marshall Fields, it is just a sight to look at. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like that is gorgeous. Look at this. And it's still there to this day. And you guys can go in and check it out. It is called the Tiffany, the Tiffany Mosaic Dome. The Marshall Fields in the early 1900s. I can tell by the fashion, because I am a fashion historian, so I can tell by the fashion that it's the early 1900s. And also in 1907-1908, opened the Walnut Room, um, which is a restaurant, I believe, at the top of Marshall Fields. I believe it's still there. I do believe it's still there. At the time, at the time of this recording, I don't believe it's open, because... Um, at this day and age, it's this thing going around called the coronavirus, um, or more professionally known as COVID-19. So a lot, almost everything has really been closed, but the Walnut Room um, is a restaurant up there, and people would dress to the nines to go. Furs, diamonds, just to go sit and eat in the Walnut Room, and I will go one day. I haven't gone yet, but I want to go one day around the holiday season because I know it's legendary. This is the Walnut Room again. Absolutely freaking stunning. And that's the Tiffany Mosaic Dome again. Throughout the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and the 50s, with the 60s, um, well, basically up to the early 2000s, Marshall Fields was nothing but glamour. With the Great, De with the Great Depression, and World War II stepping in between, they did not take away the glamour of Marshall Fields. In the 1940s and 50s, as this is a luxury department store, the Fields slogan was, give the lady what she wants. And also, there was an haute couture department in Marshall Fields. If you guys do not, with, if you guys do not know what haute couture is, I will do an, a whole different video on haute couture. But it is the highest form of fashion. It is literally high fashion. Um, the highest form, all hand done in Paris with the top desires with the top designers, I'm sorry, Scaparelli, Christian Dior, Chanel, um, Givenchy, Balenciaga, um, those couturiers. Um, and it was, you couldn't just go into the store, um, with like the regular, um, you couldn't just go into the regular state street entrance. You had to go to, through a private entry on Washington and Wabash to go to the haute couture section. More of the 1940s. And I also know in the 40s and the 50s. Um, and, and 30s and 60s, I believe. Damn near uh, almost every decade. And they kind of still do it, even though it's, you know, I'll get to that later. But um, the displays, the displays outside of Marshall Fields and inside of Marshall Fields are grand. Um, they're just extremely beautiful. The Christmas displays are what I'm talking about. Um, very beautiful, big, and it attracts people from all over. Um, even children. So it really catches the eye of children because like it's so big. It's grandia. They've never seen it before. Um, so yeah, um, I'm kind of I'm quite young. So I was uh, 
I was four when um, Marshall Fields did the you know what, and we will get into that. But um, I came right at the end of the glamour of Marshall Fields, and there is still glamour of it, and that will never be taken away, but I will get into that next. More displays. This is gorgeous. I think I believe this is the jewelry department in Marshall Fields. I want to say this is the jewelry department. Marshall Fields in the 1950s. A clearer, a, a better, a better picture. I believe this is Marshall Fields in the 1970s. Actually, no, this is that. No, this is kind of, this is like the 90s. I want to say the 90s. Marshall Fields in the, in the 90s. 90s or 80s. I'm just going to say 90s. <laughs> I'm going to say 90s. We all know that in September, I believe it was September 9th of 2006, Macy's, the luxury department store Macy's, bought out Marshall Fields and they renamed the building. They, they, the building is still Marshall Fields, but they changed the name of the building to Macy's. And um, when I tell you Chicago winds were pissed, <laughs> I can't even explain how pissed they were because this is like next level pissed off. Protests were right outside of the uh, Marshall Fields building. Like, that is ridiculous. People were pissed off. I'm talking about pissed off. They, um, they didn't, they didn't want Macy's. They, they already, I believe they had a Macy's at the Water Tower, um, which was enough. So, <laughs> they didn't want another Macy's, because, and I believe the Water Tower place, like, like the Mall Water Tower, was enough because I believe that was by also owned by Marshall Fields. So I believe that was enough for Macy's. So they were like, that's enough for Macy's. That's cool. But we don't want to have this legendary ass building um, become something of Macy's. So they wanted Marshall Fields and obviously they didn't win. Chicagoans didn't win. And like, I'm so serious. Look at how like it was protest after protest. They wanted Marshall Fields. They wanted to have that same glamour. But obviously they didn't win, and this is what it looks like today. Marshall Fields and Company, Macy's on Stage Street. <laughs> um, I go in there often. I love to go in there. I love to go get perfumes. I love to get um, some clothes. Um, I, I, I like to get the more higher price because I am a fashion historian. Plus, I also love expensive clothing. I'm, I grew up with a very expensive mother, so I kind of take after her. Um, but I love Marshall Fields and Company. I don't really call it Macy's. If I'm going to Macy's on Michigan Avenue, then I call it Macy's. But on State Street, it's nothing but Marshall Fields. And Marshall Fields is as Chicago as it gets. And I love that. So this is Shakir Adair um, with your latest fashion history video. Stay tuned for more fashion history videos because there will be more.